of the Appropriations Subcommittee for Special Projects. Uh, we're hear having hearings on uh, local assistant grant request. Uh, our first re request, Charlize, if you would go ahead and start your presentation, make the red light come on on top of your microphone, and we're ready to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Um, I have two local assistant grants coming out of Cherokee County. One is for the Cherokee County Water and Sewer Authority um, that is asking for a, a request for the Cherokee Day Training Center, which is a special needs facility for adults. And they are building a facility for four or five of their uh, members to live in a group home. And they need water lines to connect to the um, road and the fire hydrant. They have, um, they're asking for $26,000 um, and they have their matching funds of $17,000. So I would appreciate your consideration of this grant. Um, as, before we go to the next one, okay. does members have any questions on that one? Richard? I'd just like to clarify this, the training center is not operated by the Water and Sewer Authority. This is just infrastructure going to the training center. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Yes. It is um, asking for installation of an eight inch water line and fire hydrant that would be right there close to the um, home, the group home. Other questions? All right, let's move on to the next one. Very good, thank you. My second grant is for Etowah High School. And Etowah High School in Cherokee County is about 30 years old and going through growing pains. Cherokee County happens to be one of the fastest growing areas. Etowah also shares the campus with a middle school and an intermediate school. They are asking for renovations and additions to their present facility to um, do a sign for students and parents and the community. So there is a new road that you turn into the high school and they would like a large sign out there for all three schools to, for the parents and the community to know what is going on at the school. They are also asking for um, improvements of the, um, sorry, for their extracurricular activities and community activities that they use um, for their football facilities and their grounds. So not only does the three schools use this facility for events, so does the community anytime they have any outdoor activities, possibly soccer, um, flag football, that type of thing, and it has not kept up with the growth of the community. Um, they are requesting $50,000, and they have matching funds for that $50,000. Um, specifically, what would the 50, th you went through that, but I didn't quite follow. Okay. The specifics that the 50 would go to would be? First would to purchase a large sign that would be on the road, um, the major highway that um, you turn onto the campus so that all the community and students and parents would know what was going on at the three schools. So a reader board sort of sign? Yes. And how much, for, how much funding is that? He did not break it out, I'm sorry. Okay. He was just asking for the $50,000 and also renovations for the academic facilities. Um, for the extra, extracurricular and community activities that happen in Cherokee County. Okay. Other questions, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Bird, for your um, presentation. We have on this committee, as the, the, the chairman was kind of alluding to, there's a lot of different things in here, and there, there's a big part of me that thinks 50000 wouldn't fund all of them anyway. And what we've been trying to be able to do is, in, is to know exactly what the funds are going to. So as a, as a member of this committee, I would appreciate a specific breakdown on what projects, you know, if it's going to renovate the concession stand, then, then that's what I'd like to know. If it's going to buy a sign, 
you know, how much is the sign and so forth and so on. But a little bit more detailed is what I, I'd prefer to have, Mr. Chairman. One step further than that for you, Representative Byrd. Um, as we look at the amount of money that we're hopeful we'll be able to distribute throughout the state, as you divide those up between representatives and senators, the amount that we're more than likely, the, be the best we could hope for in each representative case would be around $30,000 at best. So I'm thinking what we do is we carry this one on to an alternative funding source and forward your $26,000 request on as, as the amount that we're recommending approval on. Let me understand that you first want a breakdown of the funding for Ottawa High no, School. I, no, no, I'm saying if if you're in agreement that we put your all of your eggs into the um, water lines for the center, and we let Etowah go look for alternative funding sources for their funding. Okay. Now, what we also have, Eileen has put together. Alt a list of alternative funding sources that they can use, and it includes everything from T grants to a multitude of sources that state funds are out there available to use. So you might share that with the school board as a method for them to get alternative funding for that. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. like to see it to go to the training center. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um Let's see who was who was next in order. Representative Dixon, go ahead. Have we got. And I might take this opportunity to tell everyone I've got a commit another bill I have to present at another committee at 10:30. So at 10:30, I'm going to be handing the gavel over to. Chairman Royal, who will be conducting the meeting in my absence. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for this opportunity I bring to your request from the city of Cahutta, which is a small chartered city in the north part of Whitfield County. Uh, it's strategically located. <clears throat> they maintain a volunteer fire department and have an established need for self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, the accompanying letter that is with the uh, grant request explains some of this. That there, there are a, a very busy railroad lines that come through that town. Uh, Highway 71 goes through the town, which goes from Dalton to Cleveland, Tennessee. While the interstate doesn't go that close to the town of Cahutta, a large number of the trucks actually cut across in Cleveland and come down Highway 71 and then cut back into the interstate below that. So the, uh, the amount of truck traffic that comes through this town is, is substantial also. Uh, this is a very proud uh, small town, and I would in, uh, respectfully request your support for, for this grant request. Well, th thank you for your request. We, we have been seeing a, a large volume of funding requests for volunteer fire departments both breathing apparatuses and jaws of life have been a very popular um, local assistant grant request. Uh, does the members have any other questions for this one? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Representative Cowan. Very good. Also, uh, request some funds for volunteer fire departments. These are the volunteer fire departments in uh, Thomas and Grady counties, and there is. Um, well, we're going to need some more. We got a. 
We're looking at library books here. Wait, we got the wrong one. This is Jill Chambers. Jill, you got a haircut. Jill got a little more hair, hasn't she? Yeah. While we're uh, waiting, I will tell you I was up in Cherokee County last night. Well, good. Chairman Hurd and I uh, went to high school together, played on the same baseball team. Probably graduated, never saw each other again until we came together on the house floor one day. That is true. Yes, sir. Both pitched, one from the left side and one from the right side. But he he was good. I wasn't. <laughs> I would. I think many people would debate that. I remember a, a guy from Dalton putting a baseball up on the track field over the left field fence one day that didn't think I was too good. <laughs> yeah, that same guy. That, that same guy from Dalton hit a home run against me one time too, a grand slam. Yeah, he did go on to play professional football. As a matter of fact. <laughs> yeah. These two grant requests are for um, Grady County Fire Department, Thomas County Fire Department. There's 23 fire departments, and I've made the request for um, $2,500 for equipment. They will also be used. A lot of these uh, fire departments, which are our lifeline in South Georgia, really, don't have uh, the, the breathing apparatus, don't have the portable defibrillators, and they're trying to put these together. And uh, so these, uh, I realize what you already said um, with the with the other representative that this request may be in excess of what you can fund but if if you change this it would be my request that you change it across the board and and uh, if you just wanted to reduce it to whatever you felt like you could um, let me have I would rather see it done across the board rather than just do Thomasville do Thomas County and, and leave out Grady County I'd rather see each department get less Okay. But, uh, and the request essentially is the same amounts for the same both yeah. both areas. And I think I just ran some quick numbers on it. If it you know if we could get thirty thousand, it's going to go down to about thirteen five or something like that a piece instead of the twenty five. But uh, you know, uh, Ali, would you make those notes that to reduce instead of the twenty five hundred amounts? Down to thirteen five for a total of thirty thousand for both requests. And will that do what they need, Mike? It'll help. Yeah, to be honest, we. I mean, they're always scratching for money. They don't. They, I, that's why I said when it says matching funds, there are no matching funds in the right. in the uh, those. But I, they would appreciate anything we can do for them. You have any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Representative Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, in your packet three requests, and I understand the limitations we all have so I'm going to uh, put them in an order of priority and which I think would be best for the, the area the first being the city of Fairmount which references uh, water lines and there, there is a certain area that is in between Gordon and Pickens County of which Pickens County has the water uh, the water nearest water main to but the city of Fairmount has agreed to service these residents and there's just some difficulty in getting water to them. They all are on wells right now. They've uh, they've all put down deposits for tap fees, but now the community has the ability to extend the lines to them. It's sort of a remote area, and the city of Fairmount's agreed to take on that that task. Uh, I would suggest that the the lower limit there might be acceptable, and that they could probably work within that given the deposits they've received. All right. Questions on that one? Representative Graves, do you have any idea what type of SPLOS funds they're using or prepaid tap fees, any amount involved? My understanding is they have about $16,000 in prepaid tap fees. Um, 
I believe there are about 16 residents involved and 12 of them have put deposits down already. Is there an ongoing splost right now? There is, but not for this type of use. And, and it being on a county line, there's a little bit of debate as to how it could be used because it's one other county's water line. It's, it's sort of an intergovernmental. They're trying to work together to service these citizens a little bit. The, the second request uh, would be for Pickens County, and the Pickens County government is, is trying to update some of their technology systems and, and get into the 21st century a little bit, and they need a little bit better uh, computer systems, and they want to get more, more information available through a web-based system for their uh, citizens. And I know they've requested 35,000. Um, they would be uh, thankful for anything that you can help with. Would you like to suggest an amount? I, I would. I would. I would suggest. Um, I think fifteen thousand would be sufficient and would be a great help to them. Questions? All right. Let's go on to the next one. And the, and the third one's for the city of Ranger. Last year they came before you and they had a uh, a plan in place in which they're they're working towards. They're working with. Uh, the, the regional area to come up with a, a land use plan for the entire community, but what they need some assistance with is it's just sort of a downtown, being able to come up with the zoning procedures and being able to maintain the, the historic look of the area. Uh, it's a very small town, as you know, and they've got SPLOS funds and other things they've been using, but they'd like some help with getting some design work as far as zoning and master planning. I, I, I don't quite know how to phrase it all. Right. We We... We have been making an effort to route funds towards hard bricks and mortar type of projects where mm -hmm. there's, at the end of the day, there is something tangible that the voters and the, your constituents can actually see and put their hands on. And it also makes a method for us to easily track the validity of the expenditures on next year when we look back on this year's request. So with that in mind, I we this was almost a program type of assistance mm -hmm. request and we will grade it accordingly. I understand and I'd be interested also in getting those alternative sources. I think they may be of assistance in this area as well. Thank you very much, Representative. Thank you. Thank you. To the mini chairman. Thank you very much. I handed them all Representative Lane, come on down. Representative Black will get you next. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members, I thank you for uh, letting me present this to you today. Uh, the city of Darien, uh, down on the coast, has asked for some assistance uh, for basically it's for the McIntosh Art Association. They have redone the old city jail, old county jail, and built a new jail, and the old jail's right downtown Darien. And they renovated that building, um, and the community's donated about $140,000 to that effort on, on behalf of the Art Association. And then the county and city have done some in-kind in funding on the inside. They still have some, some renovation work that's needed to be completed. The exterior of the building needs to be redone. It's an old jailhouse, about 20, about 100 years old, uh, and so they've asked. The city of Darien has asked for this this funding, um, basically to go to the it goes to the art association who's using the old jail for uh, doing art classes for local citizens, going into schools and teaching some art in the in the middle schools and high schools, doing this on on a volunteer basis. So it's a great project. It's one that the city of Darien kind of proud of to, to get get going down on the coast and we would ask that uh, they've asked for 49,000 um, I haven't been in here on your other meetings I think that exceeds a little bit right. above above well, what I, I, I would suggest that 
as we're trying to get bricks and mortar type requests in, looking at the second page, gentlemen, we see a breakdown of renovation of women's cell for museum, $10,000 certainly fits in. Free art classes to local citizens, will that would, that would be a program issue there. Okay. Classroom teaching equipment without a breakdown of the equipment would be hard pressed to know what we're talking about. And then exterior building and infrastructure refurbishments. So, so I think automatically we're bringing that down to a $37,000 request just from that that's, effort there. That's, um, that's, and is this the only request you're making? That's the only request I've made. They had other requests, and I talked to them about those requests. The city of Darien had some other requests, and I told them there's going to be some limitations. Would you rather take part of each one, or do you want to do this one? And they, they prefer to put all of their eggs into this basket and to help the Art Association. And all right, gentlemen, we have other questions? I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. We'll continue. Representative Black from South Georgia, way down in deep in South Georgia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And it's good to be with y'all and uh, bring you a request from way down in South Georgia. Wait one second, please, till we get this. Oh, get these copies. That's two. Okay, Representative Black, go ahead and tell us which one you want to look at first. Let's look at the uh, city of Morven. Okay. They have gotten uh, titled to, to an old school building that uh, was uh, the one that uh, many of the people that lived there went all the way through school in and have tremendous uh, ties to. And uh, they, uh, the city was able to form a group of private citizens called Landmark for Morven and got out and, and, and raised a bunch of money already to renovate that building. Uh, they have uh, converted it into a city hall uh, portion of it. Uh, they have uh, the police station in in that building. Uh, they, uh, they have uh, converted several other of the old rooms, the old lunch room. They've converted into a, a community center that's utilized extensively. Uh, they are still yet to get to the old auditorium, and this is uh, one of the old school buildings that was built back in the days when the schools had an auditorium large enough for the student body, and that uh, uh, needs to be renovated, and, and uh, we're here asking for $30,000 to help uh, finish up that renovation. Can you tell us a little bit more specific how the $30,000 would be used in what area? In that auditorium. In the auditorium? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, painting, refurbishing, and all of that? They've got uh, some uh, uh, damage from a leaking roof. They've got the roof, the roof fixed, but uh, there's some damage uh, that was done. Uh, that they've got to uh, get that taken care of and then repaint it. Okay. And they've, also, they've already provided a room for a city hall, police station, and a community center in this yeah. same school building. That's correct. Any questions, members of the subcommittee or committee? Okay, so you want to continue your and, other project. And, and then for Vasco's County, we got a little volunteer fire department down there that uh, in, in need of some equipment. And, uh, and, and the fact they do not have a Jaws of Life. And uh, it's my understanding that it costs a little bit more than that, but they think for $10,000 they can get a hold of something that they could utilize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions of Representative Black? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Go ahead. We had to do a little cutting here. Uh, would you cut on the renovation of the old school? If we had to do a little cutting, I'd take it on, take it on that. But uh, I put a priority on uh, doing something because you've got a situation there where that uh, these citizens of that community have got out and, and they have 
had bake sales and uh, was they sold peach ice cream and, and I don't know what all else they did. They took a lot of donations to get up the money to do what they've done so far, and, and I think that uh, we need to be a part of that kind of community effort. Any other questions? Thank you, Representative Black. We'll make full consideration of these projects. Do we have anyone else in attendance yet? Were all, were all of these representatives notified that uh, we were meeting this morning? Yeah, I can take a bottle. Yes, sir. yes, sir. I'd love a glass a bottle of water. Who who is supposed to be next? We'll 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 uh, stand at ease for a few moments. Yeah, that's the last. Let me ask you a question. I turned my hand at the last meeting. I don't know if they are going back to my request.
All right. I just want to make sure my speaker, my chairman, uh, Tom McCall's already been through and asked you all for money? Not yet. Not yet. Good. Because I, so. I told him I was afraid there wouldn't be any left by the time he got through. Well, the money ran out a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want a grant. We're not after money. Um, I've actually got two requests before you all. Okay, you got one for DeKalb County Board of Commissioners Development Authority. Development DeKalb. Authority, yes, sir. And what's the other one? And the other one uh, should be there for Briar Lake Elementary School. Should be two of them before you. Okay, got it. Okay. And I'll take them in whichever order you prefer. Well, as we're on limited funds, um, I see that your requests are totally $50,000, which will will exceed the amount that we will be able to fund. So you might prioritize and then recommend any adjusted amounts that would total in the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range. Well, and, and of course, I would appreciate whatever the committee is able to do. If they're able to do, I certainly respect the uh, constraints with which the committee is operating. Um, I, I guess if, if um, we, we need to pare them down to be reasonable, especially as a, as a freshman coming into the process. Um, if, if it winds up dividing them between the two, we can total out 25 and divide them between the two. Well, we're, we're looking for your recommendation on how you, I mean, right. your district, you know the district better than we, you know the recipients better than we. So as you compare the two, make those adjustments appropriately. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, at the first blush of this, I noticed one of them is an evaluation study, a zoning study, and that may affect Yes, as, as we are reviewing many requests, what we're trying to do is target funds in the direction of a bricks and mortar, you know, a hard result, a hard product that we can fund to, to communities in the various districts throughout the state so that at the end of the day there is something specific that is can be visible that doesn't have an ongoing cost associated with it. And then as we review the, res the funds that were distributed this year, next year, it's easy task to go back and verify if the funds went where we had appropriated them to go. And, and I appreciate having that guidance. Um, perhaps what I could do is explain to you a little bit about this, start with this specific one. If it doesn't sound like something that the committee is going to fund, that will certainly make it easy to decide between the, the two applications. Um, the, the zoning evaluation uh, is for a project in my district in the heart of Tucker called the Main Street Tucker Alliance. And, and I hope that um, we were able to get over to you a handout. I'm not going to... I know you've got a lot of work to do today, so I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but this is a project that is in its seventh year now, and it was started as a uh, consortium of business, community leaders, and community associations to both preserve and develop downtown Tucker, and, and there is already in place about $900,000 through the ARC grants, through the county match programs, and that money is ready to be expended. We're just looking at some right-of-way easements to begin the project. What this money, in terms of being able to see where this money is going, th this is sort of the last piece that we're looking for. Um, when this project was approved with the ARC's hand-in-hand um, -hand work on the project, they recommended this looks good. We went back and forth to the community about five times, took their um, views as to what downtown Tucker ought to look like. And if you haven't been down there, I'll treat you to the best turkey and dressing you've ever had at Matthews down on Main Street and come down and see the area we're talking about. It's one of the last small towns in the metro area that, that really is just a, a wonderful place to be. And, but what the folks in Tucker decided is we don't want to become just another place that gets overdeveloped. So this was a hand-in-hand -hand project to both talk about business and retail development and then also what the future will look like. And, and there are several phases to this development that I won't go into because I don't think it's relevant. But the part that is relevant is they're actually ready to break ground once the funds are approved. The last piece of the zoning evaluation, the ARC said to, to the Main Street Tucker Alliance, this plan sounds great. What you need to do, though, is based on all the community feedback, based on your plans, and based on what you're trying to do, go back and do a zoning evaluation before you actually start to make sure that the plan will work in the area. So that's the last piece that's missing. Once that is approved, and I've met with the CEO of our county and, and his staff members uh, as, as late as last Friday, on moving forward with this project and being able to expend the funds before the end of the year. 
there are actually bricks you can buy and park benches you can aim, and those things are, are both in place and ongoing. So this would be sort of the last little piece in the puzzle, and, and I would say to the community that we'd be able to s see some bricks and mortar development, and there in the DeKalb government, the development authority that's listed on this grant has agreed to oversee and audit any money that's expended to make sure it's expended the way that the committee would uh, approve it. That's really all I've got to say about this this one, especially given the committee's direction. I'd like to just move on to the uh, education grant that I'm requesting. Does the committee have Unless any questions, have questions on this one? The other request that I've made, and, and I just bring to the committee's attention, as you can see from the grant application, both uh, the senators for this district, um, from my district 82, is represented by Senators Weber and, and Henson, and they both um, are in support of these uh, two grant applications. The second one is for Briar Lake Elementary School, and that is an outstanding school in my community. In DeKalb, it, like many other school districts, has been challenged recently to be able to deliver the kind of services that it wants to. In fact, uh, in March next month, we're going to be voting as a county on a SPLOS uh, to bring more revenue in to be able to do capital improvement projects, and it's, it's several hundred million dollars that will be approved for that. Um, but you can't do everything with it. And Briar Lake Elementary School has not had any kind of computer for their students in the last five or six years. They're not able to run uh, so certain software because the computers just lack the uh, hardware inside. There are other things that they would love to have, things like electronic boards. A lot of Title I schools have uh, portable computer carts, but I've, they understand and I've explained to them that that's not something realistic given the budget constraints that they have. What they're looking for is really just a, a shot in the arm to get them up to sort of the bare minimal operating um, technology um, platforms to be able to go forward and teach kids what the kind of skills they have to have if we're going to be competitive in, in the marketplace in Georgia and forward. $15,000 will get them some. It won't get them nearly all that they need, but it will certainly help bring the kids computers into their classrooms that they don't have now to run the kind of hardware and software that they need. I'd ask you to follow up with one piece of information for us to give us item by item breakdown as to what that $15,000 would go for. Well, the, the request that came in originally was, was straight for computer acquisition because the, they just don't have them. The closest thing they've come, the, the teachers got one last, I think, three years. They got one computer, and really it is for the purchase of, of computers. Um, I would request the committee, if it sees fit, to allow them the opportunity if they find a more pressing need with, um, with, with how it's set up to... We, we have to be able to know specifically what the money's going for so that we can track it next year so that we ensure that Fair. the funds are spread properly. Fair enough. Then, then I would leave it at computer acquisition. Could you get us a letter from, um, I guess it's the Cab County School Board. Okay. S specifying that. Uh, uh, or the, yeah. Uh, Jim Mullins. I'll be happy to do that, and and I assume that, that Dr. Mullins will know the level of detail, and if there's not, if you, the committee gives me want some direction in, in how I fill that out, but I'll be glad to get you whatever letter you need. Essentially an invoice showing what's going to be purchased and the exact amount that it's going to be purchased for. Yes, sir. I'll be, I'll be happy to do that. Other questions? I appreciate the committee's time. Thank, Thank you. you very much, and I'll try and get that to you by the end of today. Thank you. Just forward it to Rebecca. Thank you for your time. Representative Earhart asked that I do his, I'm going to substitute do his for him. Yes. We probably just need to go ahead and write. Well, what, what we have here is, uh, oh. 
three three projects, yes, and he's asking for essentially $25,000 a piece for athletic facility at Hillgrove High School. That is for athletic equipment um, on the Harrison High School. He is asking for a educational program, and I've not had a chance to tell him where we are with that. Um, and the other one is programs also. Um, I think that's going to be hardware associated with that program, though, I believe. Tell you what, tell you what I bet he gets. <laughs> I, uh, Whether we do it or not. We did last year. I don't know. We, I tried to call over his office and couldn't track him down. So who is Mr. Jackson? This is Chairman McCall's. This is for very specific for the city of Elberton. Uh, Chairman McCall's. He's asking for a mobile 277 480 volt generator to power the city's water supply so that in the event of power failure, they their pumps continue to run. Um, they have a pumping station that goes into Lake Russell that they're they're drawing water from. He does have it signed off by um, Senator Whitehead and Hudgens, and I guess they probably got their calendars filled up right now on other issues, like all of us. No, not quite. Um, Gentlemen, is there any questions? He, he didn't say anything about whether they were putting any money with it or not. No. The letter doesn't say. Well, well, it does say they're seeking assistance in the amount of $45,000 to purchase. So from, and, and the generator itself, would probably be at least $45,000, so. Waiting on you. Please tell me you're not. Yes. <laughs> you got docked. Well, I told them that you know, we had three days in the If Jill, if you would take that seat Any back there where the microphone's at. 
No, we're not waiting on you. We're waiting. No, they're not. Governmental affairs, which is always an adventure. <laughs> Just oh yeah, yeah, I got the same one I did at last time. Welcome, Chairman Chambers. Um, we appreciate your attendance, and we were not waiting on you. We've we don't have a we have a set calendar of people attending today, and as we've told everyone, come in as your time is available. Thank and you. I'm thank glad you I got that you. message right. <laughs> scared me there, Mr. Chairman. Um, whenever you're ready, sir. Go right ahead. All right. I've asked for two local assistance grants this year. One um, going through the DeKalb Board of Education to help purchase new library books uh, for the schools in my district. All but one of the schools listed are um, Title I schools. Uh, the only one that's not so Title I, uh, to my knowledge, is um, Shambly Charter High School. Um, but last year when I got some grants for Title I schools, parents of kids over there were concerned that I didn't ask for a local assistance grants for Shambly Charter High as well, so I included them in there. I think we all agree that, that reading is probably one of the most important skills, and we know that going um, forward with the budget that um, there's never enough money to buy new library books, and so this specific grant for $3,000 per school um, is specifically for purchase of new library books for, for the system, especially the elementary schools. Those are by far the most important, I think. Um, some of those schools have as much as 80% of the kids on um, reduced or free lunch. The second. Uh, oh, we have a copy of this? If you would let us have yours there, and oh. we'll make quick copies of it. I'd be happy to. On this one, are they are they putting local funds with it or not? Well, they, we do have they do have funds that are um, allocated for for library books, um, Chairman Royal. But this particular one doesn't necessarily have a local grant match. For, for that one. Um, they have whatever comes out of the school board budget and out of the, uh, the state budget for library funds as well. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is such a creative idea. I just applaud you. Representative Green and I were talking about this. Any idea, though, how many books you can buy? Is there, is there an average price range? It, it, they can buy them cheaper in bulk. And I was going to let it be up to the local student uh, parent council on, on which books that they would purchase. They do have a, each school would have a prioritized list of what, what books they would like to get. So I, I really couldn't name that. They could be anywhere from, from $5 to $30, depending on if it's a, a research type book, uh, like an encyclopedia type book, or, uh, or just, you know, a, a, a book, picture book or a book of fiction if you're looking at the elementary schools. Right. Well, they, these are not textbooks, per se. These would be just library books for the library. If you go into the libraries of some of our schools, it's um, some, of, some of them are fairly sparse because they're going to be putting money where they need to. Um, sometimes the library books are, are a victim of, of those budget cuts locally. So, Chairman Chambers, as we go into the next project, um, I would recommend that you pass the word on to both groups that for next year we'll be looking when they – We'll be tracking the expenditures next year as we move forward with the committee, and we would request that they provide receipts and, and backup so that we can track specifically where the money was spent. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that, um, Mr. Chairman. In fact, uh, you and I, I think had a discussion about the le last um, local grant request that I had and reported to Cab County Schools, and they have ha heard loud and clear they'd better be spending that money as we appropriated it or they will have to return every dime. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to the next one. The second one is a grant request to purchase some tin containers called totes of fire foam. Um, you may or may not be aware, but in the city of Doraville, they house the, the fuel tanks that come up from plantation and colonial pipelines. There's two of those tank farms um, in the metro area. One is in Powder Springs, and the other one is in my district. The way the tanks work, they store fuel, and they have a floating top. If you don't know exactly how much fuel is in it from looking from the outside. If it's full, the top's up there. If the fuel is fuel's depleted uh, for each tank farm, then goes down. And it takes several tank containers or totes of this fire foam for the fire department to go out and rehearse in case of an emergency. So we wanted to have this recipient be the city of Doraville because DeKalb County so often holds funds for, for a, um, a long period of time. And we knew that we, because this, re, this tank farm resides within the city limits of Doraville, 
they would be the appropriate government recipient for this. They will in turn, along with a $10,000 local match from the people who transport the fuel, not the refineries, but the people that transport it, much smaller companies, um, will have come up with $10,000 in local funds to match it. The foam itself is going to cost somewhere in the range of about $25,000, and the local folks think they can come up with the other five grand. The they have a, about a 20-year lifespan, so once this is purchased, it's good to go. And because it could be used interjurisdictionally as well, not just for the tank farms, but if there was a tanker truck accident on I-285, on Spaghetti Junction, if Gwinnett, Southern Gwinnett County needed it in case of an accident on I-85 or, or an explosion at the tank farm, or even, heaven forbid, an airplane crash at PDK Airport. Um, any of these jurisdictions would be able to access this phone from a century locate, central location at, at the fire department. Um, the fire department at Station 19 is located near Mercer University, and so it's right there in the middle and very accessible to both Gwinnett, North Fulton, North DeKalb, and, and the PDK Airport fire departments. Questions, gentlemen? Yes, Chairman. Yes, sir. Is this actually in your district? The tank farm is, the the, um, the phone would actually be housed at the fire station, which is actually in uh, Representative Levitas' district. But because it could be used by county, cities, the airport, um, you know, both Gwinnett, parts of Fulton, and, and North DeKalb, it's really an interjurisdictional um, availability for, for, the, for the phone. Right now, if there was an airplane crash or a tanker crash, from what I understand from the battalion chief on Hazmat, um, in DeKalb County, they do not have sufficient uh, supplies of foam to put that out right now. Any other questions? Thank you, Chair. Appreciate thank you. It. Did you need this other copy, Mr. Chairman? Uh, we've got it now. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate y'all's consideration. Thank you. Chairman Hembry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for letting me have an opportunity to come before you today. Um, I've got some extra copies if you need those. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, if, if you want me to start, um, the Winston Elementary proposal, uh, or you before, just tell me. Before you start, yes, let, sir. Me, let me uh, give you the standard blurb on, on the request of obviously we have limited funds and we're targeting uh, around $30,000 per um, house member. However, um, we request that as you make your presentation, you present in the order that you would prioritize them okay. so that we have some method of judgment as we grade them. Okay. Thank you. Change this around a little bit. Okay, the, the, the first one for me uh, in priorities would be the Douglas County Fire Department. That's the second in the stack. They're replacing outdated AED automatic external defibrillators. The fire department already has some of these devices, but um, they need, uh, you know, some updated models on the fire trucks, and so I think that's a, a obviously a worthy uh, piece of equipment that could be used to save lives. So that would be my first choice. Gentlemen, do we have any questions on that one? Um, matching funds? Are they are they putting any skin in the game? They, they're already buying these. This would just help them out. They already have some. This would just help them out. So I don't know. I guess you, yet they do have matching funds, but it, it's to purchase some, some additional ones. Okay. The next one, I think, would be the, the City of Douglasville Police Department. Okay. They're, they're wanting a, a digital video camera system, system for patrol vehicles. Um, the police department has the actual tapes, and this is, I didn't know this, um, so they have the tapes, the video tapes, where they can, when they stop a, a wrongdoer, they can press the button and it'll start taping. Well, the problem with that is sometimes, you know, in a in a crisis situation, they can't. They've been changed. They have to change the tape out. 
So it kind of creates a problem if you think about the old uh, VHS tapes you put in the system on your VCR. You know, the tape may be run out. This new digital camera system automatically comes on and it transmits the signal to the police station so that the officer doesn't have to worry about changing the tapes out. And I just, technology, you know, new technology. And so the, the officers were, were wanting it because, uh, like I said, sometimes they have to fumble with changing it. You know, they don't know for sure if their tape's close to being out and changing it, keeping it, keeping track of it in the patrol car. This new technology with these digital video cameras allows the little disc to be put in the camera and it transmits all the feed. So from a safety standpoint for the officers, the feed is going back to the station so they, the station can see what's going on at that stop. A live feed. It's a live feed. It's a new live digital feed that, that, that goes on. And so that's, that's, that's what they're trying to, um, to get. They've, um, they, they, they're trying to purchase their first one. Obviously, they need more than one, but this is, a, you know, this is something they're trying to do. But it saves some lives of some police officers because you know, I, uh, if we can get that live feed, then the department knows what's going on at every moment. Questions, gentlemen? The, the next one is the uh, Douglas County Schools, the Community Character Coalition. This is a great program that enables our, our public school students to learn about character, and it's a scholarship program. And these students can, can apply for the scholarship. Uh, there's a number of guidelines they have to meet, but it's been real successful in the past and has really helped some students in need get scholarships to attend schools here in Georgia. So it's just... Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me let me share with you some of the discussions we've had sure. in the meeting as far as how we are prioritizing projects. What we're trying to deliver to the citizens of our state are bricks and mortar type of projects that are actually hard hard items that we can easily track <coughs> next year to verify funds are expended. And we have directly tried to keep away from programming type of projects. Mm -hmm. And if those are very hard to track, they're very hard to um, ensure that the monies were spent properly. Right. So, so with that said, progress. Yeah. So this one, if that's the case, then you know we can move this back, like to number five. Okay. Let's move that to number five. The next one is um, Winston Elementary School. We, you know, we're trying to instill in young people uh, the importance of science in, in an early age, and this pavilion is is going to be a science center type center. Uh, so the students can go outdoors and participate in science programs and try to just trying to encourage the uh, use of science and the interest in science in the early years. And so that's that's what that one is. That's the Winston Elementary Pavilion. Questions on that one? And then the, the next one is the uh, um, is actually a, a, the Arbor Station Elementary School, Douglas County Board of Education, Arbor Station Elementary School. Um, it's a it's you know, we hear all the stories about uh, physical fitness and childhood obesity, and they're, they're trying to build a track, basically. They've gotten a lot of uh, matching funds uh, from the local community, but they're trying to build a track at Arbor Station Elementary School, and this would help in funding that project. On the second page, they've got several phases they've gone through. They've raised uh, up to thir they've raised $30,000 so far, uh, so they've done a lot to try to to uh, get this project going. All right. Questions? I just want to add if I may. Since we're talking about obesity, the removal of the old track, what did you use the old track for? Was that for exercise and things of this nature? Yes. All right. We just feel this is a safety issue. Yes, I think they're using some kind of new. Um, uh, technologies for rubberized technology. I think that it's uh, here. I was just reading here. It's safe and accessible exercise. Um, so, other questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then, of course, the the final one is the. Okay. Thank you, guys, for giving me the opportunity. I'm very grateful. Y'all have a good day. Representative Lord. <laughs> 
Representative, go, go right ahead. All right, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I appreciate you letting me come before you today to discuss the project that we have going on in Jefferson County School Board. Uh, this project started off at a $2,150,000 project, which was all done by local uh, money, no, no, no state money in it whatsoever. What happened that we have run show, uh, we have over run our uh, uh, budget in building the building of about seventy thousand dollars. But what we're asking for, we had we we, we dipped we dipped in we had forty thousand dollars more that we took put in local money, and it left us a thirty thousand dollars short in uh, putting our equipment in. We took equipment money and finished the building. The building will be complete in November, and it, like I say, will be over a little over two million dollars. It's all done on local uh, money, and what we're asking for is thirty thousand dollars to uh, help us uh, equip the the building that we have now uh, built. Uh, we we've, we've got uh, seventy thousand of our own money that we're going to be able to use to uh, equip it, but the equipment's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars, and we're only asking for thirty out of, for the whole project. And so we're going to have about almost uh, two million two hundred thousand in it, almost out of uh, local money. Okay. And we would sure appreciate the help. Uh, I would ask if you would have them put together an itemized breakdown of of that equipment cost. All right. So we'd be able to track that next year and just have them forward it to the Sh Sure. Uh, well, now uh, let me ask you this, Mr. Chairman: Would you want a uh, breakdown of all the equipment, hundred thousand dollars worth? Uh, I don't know where they'd be able to know what they're going to spend the thirty thousand on until they until they start buying. That'd be fine. That'd be fine. Just give it for the whole hundred thousand. That's right. Okay, sir. I'd be glad to. Other questions, gentlemen? Thank you, Representative Lord. Appreciate it. Th thank you, sir. Representative Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee. Thank you for listening to uh, my request for Chatham County. I have uh, three uh, local assistant grants. The first is uh, Greenbrier, Greenbrier Children's Center. Uh, Greenbrier Children's Center is a children's center that was established in 1940. Well, before you get into this, we've got several projects listed here, and I will oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. give you our synopsis that as we look at projects, obviously we have 180 representatives. Requested, yes, sir. And most everybody is requesting some funds. As we look at the total dollar volume available to distribute throughout the state, just simply by making a mathematical calculation, we're going to be limited to probably a max of around $30,000 per representative. Yes, sir. Um, with that in mind, that we have limited funds, we're also putting limits as to, in order that the communities get tangible, hard um, projects, we want those to go towards bricks and mortar type projects, no program type projects that are difficult to track as far as verifying monies were spent properly. And um, so with the limited amounts that we're looking at, I'd ask you to make your presentation in a what you know your community better than we do, so if you would make your presentation in a prioritized fashion so that you send, present your highest priority first, lowest priority last, and an adjusted value on to based on the amounts that we're going to be able to distribute. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with that being said, Mr. Chairman, the first project is uh, a, a van for Greenbrier Children's Center. One van. In my, in my request, it said three, but we absolutely need one van. The Children's Service Center it was established in 1944, and it, it, it's a long-term and short-term housing for children in the greater coastal area. Uh, it deals every, anyway, anything with uh, those children that are, who are too old to, to be adopted, and they have cottages for them, and they stay there until they're 18. They have little apartments. We also take they also take in as young as infants who mothers, for instance, may have been arrested or or they can't find placement for children at, at some time or they can't find their parents. Uh, children go there as, as early as four weeks old. 
and until somebody claims them. It is a, it's always it's also a safe shelter for parents that's been in a battered relationship. They take in the the mother and their children. So it's a but they don't have any transportation there. They have a van. They take transportation to pick up kids and transport them to and from school. Uh, their youngest, they have a van. It is uh, 17 years old, and it is old, and they need something new. That's my number one priority. They need something to transport these children to and from. Questions related to this project? Uh, I see that you don't have a sender. Who is the sender in this district? Uh, the sender is uh, City of Savannah. The uh, Michael Brown, I'm sorry. The city manager. No, no, no. The senator. Oh, I'm sorry. Senator Regina Thomas. Okay. Is she aware of this of your request on this? Part? She's aware of this re request and she's in favor of it. And she's not, but she's not re requesting funds also for this. Project. No, sir. She is not. Yes, sir. Since we're going to one van, uh, we divide that money to $33,000. Are you on a specify on a, uh, an amount that you would request? Actually, we're going to uh, ask for $25,000. We're going to ask for $25,000 and we're going to ask uh, and and we're going to ask to do a fundraiser for the other five. Local charitables for, for the other five to make it work. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. How much is the van? The van cost is $33,000. But I think with local fundraising efforts, we could come up with the other seven. All right. Okay. Other questions, gentlemen? All right. Let's move on to your next one. Second request, sir, is for the uh, City of Savannah, the first T program of Savannah. The first T program is a after-school project that introduced young adults, or uh, well, young children, into the arts of golf. And it's just not golf, it's um, day-to-day it's -day experiences with adults. It's an after-school program, but they intertwine golf with uh, leadership skills and teaching skills. And the $5,000 I'm asking for this amount is to buy uh, clubs and pay f buy clubs and equipment so that they can uh, learn this skill of golf for uh, inner city Savannah youth. Questions, gentlemen? Did you say this request is now $5,000? Yes, sir. It's now $5,000 to be within rim of the total request. Thank you. And what that would do is that will buy introduction golf equipment for a number of students. Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir. I appreciate it, but you had on here paying for playing fees. Well, in the city of Savannah, uh, you have to rent space so that children can actually go out and play play, play golf. But we won't do that. Now we will uh, just um, come over that the paying fee some some other way. The five thousand dollars will only pay for the the equipment, the golfing clubs. I don't, I'm not a big player. Right, the golfing clubs for the children for the youth. The sticks. Yeah. Other questions on that one? Thank you. Next one. That's it, sir. That's okay, uh, within the thirty thousand dollars. Void the other one. Yes, sir. Be because, Mr. Chairman, am, am I correct? The limit is thirty thousand. Correct, that is sir. Correct. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Thank you committee. We're missing Stacy Abrams. Well, if he's covering green fees, I wouldn't mind coming down and being part of the program. <laughs> 